Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And today I'd like to talk to you about the topic of proof. What is proof? And in my discussion, I will try to keep things as simple as possible because, you know, using a lot of uh, complicated words and jargon that belongs to a particular field of study doesn't really help even those who are supposedly the most uh, educated amongst us to understand. In fact, those who have uh, advanced degrees usually don't know or have a basic or a deep foundation, foundational understanding of their topic. So they are really trained to think like parrots and uh, they accept what they are told and simply pass it along, not really having an understanding of what's actually, of what's actually being meant by that particular theory. Now remember, theory is not, uh, is not necessarily right or wrong. It's either well-formed or ill-formed. So when we say uh, theory is right, we mean it's well-formed. Uh, it doesn't, that also doesn't mean that the theory can't be revised, corrected, or even discarded at some future stage, because all knowledge is questionable. Okay, so anyway, I don't want to go off on a tangent about theory. I want to talk about proof. So let's begin. Now, it is always a good idea to start with a dictionary, with a few dictionaries, in fact. Why? Because meanings of words can change through time, and the etymology of words helps to understand why such words came into being, and also the pattern of change through time. Um, the etymology of words, yeah, I just read that. Words are borrowed from other languages where the original intent is misinterpreted. Often knowing another language helps to understand both meaning and context. And one word, for example, that shouldn't have even been invented is the word sophistry. For example, sophistry states, or the definition of sophistry, sophistry is that it's the clever use of arguments that seem true, but are really false in order to deceive others. Now, if you think about that, and you put false here, because that's what it's referring to. It's referring to false arguments. It's the clever use of false arguments. Well, the use of false arguments, for one thing, is never clever, and false arguments never seem true to somebody who knows. Okay? So this is really a very stupid word. It should never have been uh, created or used. So... At any rate, proof is the evidence or the process of establishing the validity of a statement, especially by derivation from other statements in accordance with the principles of reasoning. And now that is Webster's definition. The red highlighted part, this especially by derivation, is a special type of proofing process that is commonly known as logic, which is used in mathematics. The first part of the definition is sufficient in general arguments. This part here is sufficient. Okay, so I mean, uh, proof can simply be evidence. I mean, you can simply say, well, this person stole these goods because he has the goods in his possession and they came from a particular uh, retailer or store, right? In the other case, it could be a process where you're proving a particular statement, which is what I'm going to be discussing in this video. So to be in accordance with the principles or ideas of reasoning suggests logic. And the word logic comes from a Greek word that can mean word, ratio, reason, rationality, and cause. Let's see some examples. Then iparchi logos. That simply means there is no reason. Then ine logiko. It is not logical. O logos enoi kati alo. The word means something else. O logos ine miasigrisi meyathon. Okay, a ratio is a comparison of magnitudes. Apopu apedixe, sorry, aftopu apedixe, then ine logiko. What he proved is not reasonable. 
Logiki, or logic in its most primitive and simplest form, is about producing a logical argument, one that must make sense. In other words, it must be based on reason, which is the same as cause or justification. Right. Given that arguments require words with assigned meanings in terms of simpler words and sentences are used to communicate arguments, we must have words that are well formed. If the most primitive words are names of objects or ideas, then more complex words are a well formed construction of these primitive words. One of the first observations about logic was by Aristotle, who claimed that definitions refer to properties that do not necessarily indicate the nature of what is being described. However, a property may not necessarily be unique. So a property is something which does not indicate the essence or the nature of a thing, yet belongs to that thing alone, and is predicated convertibly by convertibly of it. Well, uh, let's just read the full thing. Thus it is a property of man to be capable of learning grammar, for if he is a man, then he is capable of learning grammar, and if he is capable of learning grammar, then he is a man. For no one calls anything a property which may possibly belong to something else. Uh, example, sleep in the case of man, even though at a certain time it may happen to belong to him alone. So sleep really belongs to many other creatures too, right? Animals also sleep. Now, the idea here is that if you're going to assign a property to a particular thing, it should be a unique property. Otherwise, it does not necessarily, necessarily describe that object or thing, okay, um, because another object or thing may also possess it. And that's what Aristotle was saying there. The ignoramuses of mainstream academia refer to irrational numbers, that is, numbers that are not ratios. <laughs> In other words, a number that does not possess the property of being a ratio, which is a comparison of two magnitudes. Proof requires reason, which in turn requires comparison, or more specifically, logos, or ratio in mathematics. And that, in very simple terms, <clears throat> is what proof is all about. In fact, it is exactly what is proof, right? So proof in mathematics requires reason, which in turn requires comparison, or uh, more specifically, logos, or the ratio. And that is the end of this uh, video. My name is John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.